Hi, this is Vince. Today I'm going to show you how to align your laser cutter in five easy steps. If you're pulling your hair out trying to get your alignment right, chances are you're confusing aligning with centering. Stop centering, at least for now. The point of aligning is to get the laser to hit the same spot on each of the mirrors no matter where the head is, whether it's moving vertically on the y-axis or horizontally on the x-axis. Once you've got those two together, then the head can be anywhere on the bed and you'll still have it hit the same consistent spot. And that's what you want. First, some terms. Mirror 1 is located directly in front of the laser tube. Mirror 2 is the mirror that rides back and forth on the gantry. And then mirror 3 is the mirror that's generally located inside the laser head itself. Now, on an inexpensive laser cutter like a K40, mirror 3 is not generally adjustable. So we don't have to worry about it, but we still have to aim mirror 1 and mirror 2 when we align. To align your laser cutter, you first adjust these thumb screws on mirror 1 so that the laser beam reflects off it and strikes a consistent spot on mirror 2, which we measure with tape here, no matter if the gantry is moved close or far away. Then the second step is to adjust the thumb screws on mirror 2 so that when the laser beam bounces off it, it hits the same spot in a hole on the side of the head, whether it's close by or far away. Once those two things are set, then theoretically you can move the head anywhere on the bed. And if you do a test shot there, you'll find out that the beam always hits the same spot. And that's what you want. Now when one of your mirrors isn't aimed properly, then you get inconsistent results, and alignment is the process of correcting that. Now here I'll demo on my x-axis. I've adjusted mirror 2, so it's not pointing in the correct spot. And if we take a test shot in the close position, it doesn't look too bad, but if we move it to a far position, we'll see that it hits an inconsistent spot that's further away. And so what you want to do is you want to make the two spots the same. And what I call the ACD method, C refers to the test shot you get when the target and source mirror are close together, and D is the distant test shot you get when you move the target and source mirror far away. A refers to the aligned spot. This is the one you want to find and point the mirror to. To figure out the relationship between A, C, and D, let's start with an axis that's already aligned. And we take a test shot to get our A, then I'm going to tweak the mirror a little bit to put it out of alignment, and then we'll take two test shots to figure out where a C and D would be when you're out of alignment. Now it's a little difficult to see here, but if I mark out the three spots, first D, C, and then A, you'll see that the three are in a line, and that the A spot is actually outside the line between D and C, on the far side of C. This is always going to be the case. So when you're doing your own aligning, you take your close test shot, and you take your distant test shot, and so what you're going to want to do is you're going to be looking for your A. And you know it's going to be on the line defined by C and D, but it's not going to be in between C and D, where most people think it is. Instead, your A is always going to be 
on the far side of the sea somewhere, usually closer to the sea than the distance between C and D. In other words, they're always going to be in A, C, D order. Now, they might not be the same order left and right. They could be rotated up, they could be rotated backwards, but it's always going to be A, then C, then D. Now, the thing that most people don't know is that you can actually locate A precisely from just your two test shots, and you can derive its position from the geometry of your machine, because the A, C, and D distances correspond to how far the beam has to go when your head or your second mirror is close to the source mirror or far away. So here, I've marked the beam positions, both where it originates and then where it hits the target in its two test positions, A, then C, then D. Now these three spots, the ratio between A and C and C and D, are going to be the same as what you see in your test shots. Now, in the case of my x-axis, which has a custom gantry that I put together, my A to C distance is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, about one-tenth of the distance between C and D. So whenever I do my alignment, I always know that I get my C and my D, and I estimate about a tenth that distance, and I always know that's where I'm going to try to aim for my A. Now each axis is going to be different, but on a standard K40, the Y axis, the A to C distance, is about one half the C to D distance. So when you do your test shots, you can calculate the C to D, divide that in half, and you place the A about one half as far away on the far side of C. So let's see the ACD method at work on the x-axis. I've misadjusted the mirror, and I've taken my close shot, and now I take my D, the distance shot, and you see it's just barely there on the tape. I take one-tenth that space, and I kind of estimate this is where the A shot should be. And then I'm just going to tweak the mirror, taking a bunch of sh test shots, until I can get the laser beam to hit about that spot. Oh, now I'm about halfway there. A couple more adjustments. That's a little low. Let's move it up a little bit and over. Still a little bit higher. Okay, and then a little more diagonally. Alright, that's getting pretty close. Now it's getting kind of hard to see. One more shot. And let's use a clean piece of tape to go ahead and see how close we are. Again, we'll do our close shot. We do our distant shot. Oh, it's pretty close. Maybe just a little bit of tweaking. There, it looks pretty good. Yep. Okay. And we verify on a new piece of tape. Do the close. Do the distant. There. We're done. It's that easy. Now, after you have the alignment correct for a particular axis, that's when you want to worry about centering. Now, in this case, if the beam is off to one side a little bit and you want to get it more centered, and if that's important for the head, it's not so important for mirror two, then the easiest thing to do is to move the target. Now, I don't really have a standard head, but a standard head, there's a plate that looks like this. I'm oh, sorry, it's upside down. And so there's some screws that you can loosen, and once you do, you can just go ahead and move the plate side to side to get it centered horizontally. Now, there's a different case if you want to actually center vertically. So if the beam is hitting too high, then the easiest way to do that is just prop up the target. You can loosen some screws and stick some washers underneath to raise either the head or mirror two. 
Now, if the beam is hitting too low, you don't always have the option of just changing the spacing. And if that happens, you can loosen up the screw on the mount that holds the end of the laser tube, and then prop up the laser tube a little bit and redo some of your alignment to move the beam from too low to the middle of the head, which is what you want. Now an edge case that most people don't have to worry about is what happens if your gantry is twisted. Now when you do your alignment, generally three corners look okay because part of your alignment process actually ensures that they're hitting in a consistent spot. But what ends up happening is the, there's an odd corner, typically the upper right corner, that may be either too high or too low. If it's too high, the solution is pretty simple. What you do is you just prop up that corner of the gantry by taking out its supports and sticking some washers underneath. Now if it's too low, then you don't have the option to do that. But all you need to do is realign your x-axis. Instead of at the front of the machine, realign it at the back of the machine. And what will happen is then the upper right is going to be correct, and then the odd corner out instead is going to be the lower right corner. But part of the alignment process, it means instead of that being too low, all of a sudden that will be too high. And when it's too high, then you can go ahead and prop up that corner by putting some washers underneath and then you're done. That's it. That's the five easy rules to aligning your laser cutter. First, stop centering, at least initially. Instead, use the ACD method to align each axis. Afterwards, move the target to center. Now, if you have to, you can prop up the laser tube if the beam is too low. And then if your gantry is twisted, like in shipping or whatever, then you can prop up the odd corner to make it straight again. All right, that's it. That's my video. I uh, hope you like it and looking forward to making some more in the future. See ya.